What's going on everybody? Sean from Premier Outdoor Living here and today we're going to be talking about blocking on your deck structure. So there's two main types of blocking and we'll cover both of them here. First we'll talk about mid-span blocking so let's check it out. So any span between beams or between your ledger and your beam greater than eight feet you're going to want to do mid-span blocking. This is going to stiffen everything up. It's going to keep all of your joists on layout and keep them from waving. So here we have a 13 foot span from our ledger to our first beam and we have blocking right down the middle since it's greater than eight feet. With blocking, you really can't do too much blocking. It's just gonna stiffen up the entire structure, but anything over eight feet, you definitely wanna do mid-span blocking. The next type of blocking is over the beam blocking. So let's take a look at that. So with this deck, you can see we have a cantilever of our joist. So our beam is set two feet back from the edge of our deck and the joist cantilever passed. Whenever you have a cantilever like this on your deck structure, you need to install blocking over top of the beam all the way across wherever you have a cantilever of any type. So those are the two main types. The last type is just accessory blocking. You can see here we have two by eights running flat on top of the deck surface. And that is for an accessory detail that we're doing with our decking. So this isn't mandatory by code by any means, but wherever you do certain details, like changing the direction of your decking, you're going to need some blocking to pick up the ends of those boards. So to sum it up, we have our mid span blocking, our over the beam blocking, both required by code. And then we have accessory blocking for picture frame details, for changes of direction and deck boards, all of that kind of stuff. That's all you need to know about blocking pretty cut and dry. Make sure you do it. Your deck's going to be a lot stronger.